Oh, snap. We're giving away free supplements right now. Here's what you can win if you leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. A bottle of Move from Organifi. Reduces inflammation, helps your body deal with stress, uh, and it's great for your joints. Good stuff. We'll send it right to your door if we pick your comment. But you got to leave that comment in the first 24 hours. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Do this for us, but also do this for yourself. One more thing before we get to the episode here, and this is a great episode. You're going to love this episode, I promise. Uh, we are giving, we have a huge promotion, 50% off two programs and a bundle. Okay. So huge sale maps, prime 50% off maps, prime pro 50% off. And the prime bundle is also 50% off. Go check these out. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code June prime with no space for the discount. All right. Enjoy this podcast. Hey, remember when we all started, it was recently, we're all like, we're all going to get leaner and we weighed ourselves in. Yeah. You guys, what, do you remember? What was my weight at? Was it like 220? 225. 225? No, no, no. Because oh, yeah, you're I lower. was 225. That's you were, right. You, I was 227. Yeah. And then- or I mean, no, I was, like, I, no, I was 230. Yeah, I was 230 something. You were the you were the middle. He was like two pounds from me. I yeah, I was, like, he was lighter. I was like two twenty three. I think two twenty. Yeah. I think is what you were something right like at. that, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Do okay. Where are you? Are you, are you guys? Do you guys know where you're at now? I Have haven't you guys weighed dropped? myself. Uh-uh. Really? Yeah. Oh man, I yeah, just, I, I'm not like. I mean, I haven't weighed in like a week or so, but I have an idea where I'm at. Where are you, where are you at? Mm. I'm actually I'm not moving very very much. I'm, I mean, I, I dropped the initial right, so I was two thirty. So I'm a lot different where I was. I'm two twenty. I've been 10 pounds. Yeah. I mean, but I've been hanging at 220. I got down to 220 pretty quick, and then I've been hanging there trying to get down to 215 is where uh, I'd like to be. But it's, but I, honestly. Yeah, but you're doing a bit of a transfer, it looks like. Yeah. You yeah, look like you're gaining muscle. Kind of. Yeah. You know, I mean, I have good weeks and bad weeks. I mean, I'm having, uh, this weekend I was a Justin was saying in your glute area, looks yeah, like it's, it's growing. It's really Primarily there. Yes. Not yeah. Finally. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I've been uh, yeah. secretly doing hip thrusts like you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you don't work out here. That's why you don't work out yeah, here. Yeah. No, you can't no, hip thrust as much. No, I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, I gotta wear tights at home. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm yeah. just kidding. Make me feel insecure. Yeah. No, you know what I'm at now, right now. Uh, so if I was around 220, that's pretty crazy. I'm, I'm guessing you are. Do it. 205. Mm, that's close. I'm pretty good this really? game. That's really close. I'd 203. Be good to, oh, look how close I yeah, was. Yeah, I've lost like 17. So you know what's crazy about this? This is the paradox of fat loss, and this is especially for guys. It could be a pain in the ass. So today, Eli mm -hmm. came in, right? That's our, our editor, and he does our video and stuff. And he actually does some pretty good... Uh, actually, you should check out some of our videos on what goes on here behind the scenes. That's all Eli. Our but anyhow, vlogs. Anyway, he comes in, and he's... And I'm working out, and I've got the you know I've got the wife beater on or whatever. And he... Naturally. Yes. That's my workout. <laughs> that's actually my always Strange. Yeah. So he's, he's like, hey, let me take some pictures or whatever. He's like, dude, what have you been doing? I'm like, I dropped about 17 pounds. And he's like, you did? He goes, you look like you gained weight. Like, that's the paradox yeah. of getting leaner. You get leaner. I'm so mad. Now you feel smaller in a sweater, that's for sure. I'm so mad I didn't learn that until like 10 years Bro, after. Bro, it took me yeah. forever. Yeah. I know. I was, on a, I was on a permanent bulk for the longest time. And I don't remember what, what, what made me get on a cut for the first time. I mean, I think it was the first time I ever felt like I actually had uh, like really jumped up in body fat percentage. I was always you know pretty lean as a kid. And uh, switched to leaning out, and that was exactly what happened to me. I started getting these compliments. Man, you look big. Yeah, and I'm like, like I lost ten pounds. Yeah, I'm down weight, and everyone's saying that. Well, so. it's like actually you can see the muscle. You know, so it's like uh, for me, it's usually like, oh, I just have an arm. Yeah, it's like all <laughs> arm. <laughs> but then now it's like, oh, there's muscles that are defined. <laughs> oh, under there's a there. shoulder there. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's some. Was, there's some lines. Yeah, I was so caught up on weight and size as a kid that I would measure my arms, and I didn't care if the arm got bigger. It was a good thing, right? Yeah, yeah. But the biggest I ever got my arm ever was like a little over 18 inches. When I get really shredded, my arm will get down to 17, maybe even smaller than 17. Looks yeah. way bigger. It you, looks way bigger because you're leaner. You know, speaking of working out, and I, I have to say, dude, I am, and I remember a while back, I mean, it was it was quite some time that we got into this big debate about, you know, being a gym person and at home. Per, I mean, mm. I have been lifting at home now uh, for, God, we're going on over a year. The most consistent I've ever been lifting at home. Are you a home guy now? I, no, I, I don't want to go that far. You? I haven't, I don't want to go that far yet because I, to be honest with you, I don't, I can't even remember what it's like to work out in a gym. It's been so long, yeah. right? It's been that long for me that, that this is the only option. What I, what I'm enjoying the most, like, and I, I absolutely love that. I think you guys know, I obviously, I put a, a PRX at the, at the house now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what do you have? You have the, the fold out cage, barbell, 
weights. Do you have dumbbells? Yep. Yeah. You have dumbbells? Yeah, but we you have the one with the multiple grips, right, for the pull-ups? Yeah, I have the same one that we have in here, except yeah. for mine's solid black. So I'm I just jealous. Want, I don't have that one. Yeah, I went, all, I went all black on that. And and then the weights are cheaper to go all black, too. So they don't, they don't look as cool. Mm. So my my home gym doesn't look as cool as, like, this one in yeah. the, 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 the trucky house. But uh, it's a lot cheaper. I didn't realize what a difference you it was. You have the curl bar and the. I'm going bench. all out on my next my next home version. I do have I do so I have an adjustable bench and I also have the bench that full. By the way, that's really cool too. It's I, so convenient and it's nice. I thought it would. So be, what do you do? It attaches so it, under the cage. Yeah, it goes. It folds up against the wall. And you can either leave it up like that, or you can fold it out. Mm. And I thought it would be a little janky, to be honest with you. Like I thought, you know, right. a, a bench that's attached to the wall like that and not folds gonna out, be stable. It's not going to be stable. The opposite is true. Yeah. And it's also a nice wide one, which I like the wider benches. So, so when you leave it folded yeah. up, you can still use the cage right. for. Can you still use the cage for incline with the with yeah. the? Yes. Oh, so it doesn't get away for anything. Yeah, it doesn't get away at all. So I when I I roll the I roll the. It doesn't go up though for incline, right? No, no, no. It, he, what he's saying is, so I have two benches. I have the bench that folds down. Oh, so you, you keep that up and then you bring the other. That's yes. right. Yeah. And then I have See, an adjustable. I thought it would get in the way. No. Yeah, because I was like, oh man, did they figure that out? No. I was about to, my head was going to No, no, no. So I, I just, I have an adjustable one and then I just rolled under there and it, yeah, no, it doesn't get in the way at all. Wow. So I only use it when I'm doing flat bench press. Otherwise it stays folded up. Dude, people don't realize what a big deal this is. I've worked out in home gyms my whole life and a squat rack takes up a shit ton of space. This is the pain in the ass with it because you got, if you have a garage, you're not going to park your car in there anymore. Well, that's so yeah. for me, uh, you know, I've one been a gym guy for so long, not not really been in the at home workout. The other reason why I've never wanted to do a gym at home was because I have, you know, cars that I park in the garage and I want my cars in the garage. Like it's I'd much rather I'd rather that and go pay for a gym membership. But with this, I can do both, you know, so the cars fit perfectly fine with the the setup because I mean, it literally. No, it's like this. Yeah, it takes yeah. up no space at all. Yeah, it's nothing. Yeah. yeah. What impressed me was the stability of it. I'm a, I mean, here's the thing. When you use a cage, you want it to be stable. And I've worked out long. I remember, I'm old enough to remember what cages for home Especially use. Especially when you're lifting big boy weights. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Isn't that right? <laughs> hey. <laughs> no, I, I'm old enough to remember what at home cages were like, and they were not the most stable. Mm -hmm. It was like, you're, you're all right, let's pl we're playing this game. Let's see what happens. Or you had to have this massive one that took up Commercial, half, yeah, half yeah. your garage. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. The PRX ones, I remember we first were about to work with them, and then we installed them. I was super skeptical. I'm like, let's see how... It's more stable yeah, you're than like, Justin. You try this out first. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's more. This is true. All right, hopefully, this works out the, for me. The PRX squat rack is more stable than the big commercial power yeah, racks that you I work in because it is anchored I agree. In, at the wall. Okay, so now you're working at home. You're liking it more. What is it about working out at home that you're you're finding that you like? So what what's what is interesting is my tra so I I feel pretty good right where my physique is at right now. Nowhere near like where I'm where I want to be or where I'm heading. Still um, pretty hot, but yeah, like a you look pretty good. Like a six and a half is what I yeah. feel like right now. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah Damn, what's yeah, a ten? Yeah, six and a half on the Thursday. Ten year. is what I look like when I'm on stage, bro. That's ten. That's Damn. a dime. That's a dime piece. Yeah, right yeah. There. Yeah. No, real talk though. Uh, what I my training is. Um, really different right now like i i really am taking advantage of the whole at home thing and not this structured one hour workout time i've been so you'll do a few sets yeah it's sets. like i'll do that i'll do two exercises here when i get home i'll do one exercise and i'll go do stuff with max come back later do another one mm -hmm. it's really starting to look like kind of like your all day workout you know routine that you do any differences you notice i mean with the the mental part, right? It kind of messes with me. It makes me feel like I'm not training very well. Of course, I I think I'm not like doing a good job. But then obviously, I mean, I I'm paying attention, tracking my physique, and 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 I'm taking like weekly photos. And the and, volume, total volume is probably up. Yeah, yeah, it's probably about the same or up, right? Because I'm I'm doing it more frequently through the day, and I don't. It's weird. It's a it's a kind of a mind fuck mm -hmm. because I feel like I'm slacking. I, Cause I'm like, I never like really break a sweat a lot of times and I don't really get this massive pump sometimes. And, but because I'm just kind of just periodically going in the gym, go hit four or five sets of something and then go do something it's more effective. I it, feel like. It's pretty cool. And it, and that part of having a home gym, I am really enjoying that. And it, the fact that I feel like I feel very inconsistent about my lifting right now and that I'm able to maintain the physique that I have right now, I feel really good. Well, I mean, I'm, Guilty of doing the shirtless workouts. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> At home. 
Only though. Wow. At home. And it was funny because Look what we've done to Justin. You, you, you guys are trying to literally like transform and change me. I really? know what's happening mm-hmm. here. But I was working out and uh, I had my shirt off and I'm doing my thing. And then Courtney like came downstairs and she's like, wait a minute, just stay right there. And then she took her phone out and she like took a picture of me. Oh, oh like, what? This is the first time that's happened. She's all like, manipulated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait I'm a sure. minute. Wait yeah. a minute. Did she send that to Jessica? I think she texted Jessica. <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry, girls. dude. I mean, yeah. it, you know, like anybody wants to use it, it's fine. Yeah. Well, speaking of sex, you know, this is actually moving from your conversation that you had about the autonomous, uh, you know, drone that was killing that's people. Killing people. Yeah. Did you hear that you can uh, program the sex dolls to murder? Oh, I read. This Did article. you read that article? I, they didn't what? say you can. They it, said theoretically okay. a hacker could. That's what it was. Well, yes. here's the thing, right? You've seen all these hackers and what they've been doing with uh, what was it lately was the red meat or the, or the meat distribution. Like mm-hmm. they've, they've hacked the whole chain for that, and they've also hacked the um, what was that with the, with the gas? Wait a second, back, back up on the. Well, so, I didn't hear any about this. What? Yeah, that just recently happened. He's like animal rights ago. activists. Yeah, and they fucked with the computer systems of meat. So the slaughterhouses and everything else, like the, they're all on the software, and they hacked into their software somehow. Yeah. What? Well, the, so theoretically, there's a lot of problems you think of. So this is my you know crazy mind, but. Think about autonomous cars. Your mind in, listen, in 20 years, 20 or 30 years, 100%, almost every car you'll see out driving is going to be a self-driving autonomous car. People aren't going to own cars like they do now. It's just not going to make any sense. Now think of like somebody who's nef- like with really nefarious intentions, like a terrorist attack, and they yeah. they yeah. hack like- Drive you off a cliff. Yeah, like 50,000 of them all at the same time. All of a sudden during rush hour, cars are just you know, all over the place. Terrible, right? Yeah, that's why I keep it old school. Yeah. But I read that article about. The I mean, I'm a little more. I'm more afraid of the sex robot. Like, <laughs> you're vulnerable. I mean, flying off. Yeah, I was oh, gonna say, baby. I oh, mean, baby. Driving Me? off a cliff in my car is scary too. But uh, I mean, if I'm at home with my sex doll and she all of a sudden tries to cut my thing off, like that sounds way scarier. Yeah. Well, you're having sex with it. It gets Lorena Bobbitt. Doll. It starts to get rough. You're like, ooh, I like this no new program. Oh, that's too rough. <laughs> <laughs> disengage. Disengage. Turn off. Ah! You know, when you die. Yeah. Safe word. What's what, a safe word? What an embarrassing way to die. Uh, Could you imagine that? Well, so Dude. do you think we found uh, Adam uh, dead? Well, this what is happened? what I worry about with any of this stuff and Neuralink and all these new things. Like we're, oh yeah, let's just put a chip in your brain that somebody could have access to. It sounds sounds like it's safe. Yeah. Nobody. Also, listen. Forget the hacking of the robot doll to make to make it kill you or whatever. The robot fuck doll. Like just having robot fuck dolls. Okay, that's going to change humanity more than people i think care to realize let's yeah. talk about the positive of this. yeah exactly <laughs> no, no more yeah. traffic oh, all the that's angry right. guys oh, that's how i thought that, all the angry guys out there the ones killing people and stuff dude they're just gonna have robots they're just yeah you're gonna be happy give them a robot yeah i just think no one's gonna go outside uh, anymore look what video games did to kids oh real soon here now adults won't be out it's gonna be terrible so kids will be in playing video games guys will be in fucking <laughs> dolls no traffic <laughs> no, that's it <laughs> that's what i see coming so i'm excited i'm yeah. all i'm for this i'm that's pushing it, it. yeah It'll, wow. be a, it'll be like people will spend a lot of money on it for sure. What are you saving your money for? Well, I've got three <laughs> Fuckmaster 4000s. I'm trying to get the I'm trying to get the next model. Like Apple's going to come out with a new one each time. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh, you got the 12? Like, like their phone scam? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this yeah. one talks back this to you. This one looks just like Pamela <laughs> from Baywatch. This, this, yeah. one, this one orgasms every time. doesn't matter what you do. It <laughs> orga- oh, my God. This one cleans your house, too? Uh, psh, let's yeah, do this. Yeah. 10 grand down. Uh, anyway. Wow. Yeah, that is kind of kind of weird. I don't know. Speaking of weird i've been waiting for you to give us the lowdown on the mayweather paul <clears throat> oh, fight no. over the weekend so i i watched it yeah, we um, didn't buy it i almost missed it so i i forgot it was coming up and then i uh something i think some popped up in my feed and i'm like oh shit that's supposed to be this weekend and they had it at sunday uh sunday night which was just weird as in the first place so i thought that was really interesting that they did a sunday well, yeah, I, why not saturday that's yeah strange which whatever though i mean that's why i got it so i, w- I wouldn't have been able to watch it if it was on saturday so I watched it, and um, you, Logan Paul went all eight with him, but it was a terrible. It was terrible, dude. Was, there was no judges. They weren't going to declare a winner no matter what. No, they were. Yeah, they would. I mean, it, it was still. It was still. It was an exhibition, but there was not. So base knockouts, points, basically. Yeah, knockdowns, knockouts. So they would say. Yeah, but no points. In other words, if no knockouts oh, happen, got it, got it. There's no winner. Yeah, yeah. So there's no. Now I read. This is what I read. So I didn't mm. watch it. Okay, but I read some controversy. Someone put up a clip on Twitter. And it looked like at one point, I don't know if you've seen this, Mayweather hits him and he slumps over, but Mayweather holds him up. 
and then he comes to. And so the, the speculation is that he the, the agreement was yeah, it was like a left hook that he that he it's like nobody knocking you know don't knock me out. So that make is it last. I, I saw that right. So I I watched that. Which by the way, so there's a, did you guys see everything with Showtime? Their streaming was because it was so over. I'm assuming because it was so overloaded. I only got like half the fight. It was dropping every every Holy minute and a half. No every way. yeah. So and Katrina got online to see like everybody was so a bunch of people were demanding a refund. Wow. And it's so annoying. And when you sign for it, you the disclaimer is that they they won't give a refund for something like that. If there was obviously the fight gets canceled, you can get a refund. So they must have made a ton. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. know Mayweather is supposed to make uh, fifty million. Is what I heard. Yeah. Or five. Yeah, fifty million. No, hundred or something like that. Oh, after all the money oh, comes after in. everything else. Yeah, I think they they I think they projected him. Uh, Jake, I mean, excuse me, uh, Logan, to make at, le at least 10 to 20. And I think they projected Mayweather to Dude, make like 50. I feel terrible for <laughs> fighters, for real fighters. Yeah, you if know. If I'm watching this, I'm so frustrated. So I have it rounds. Like, so did, did he... Like Mayweather didn't even come out there like aggressively, well, it, or was he like doing exactly, this whole defensive? Do you guys theory? remember when we talked about this? This is exactly what I thought was going to happen. I mean, Mayweather is notorious for this. He is yeah. the, what he is known he for. It along. Yeah, what he is known for is he's got one of the best boxing defenses in in the world ever. ever. ever I mean, that yeah. was what he was so good at. He's so elusive, and so if it, I always thought like even if Paul had a, a, a slight chance at one point in the fight. He would just outdance him. I knew that would happen. I was like, so even if he gets hit one time and it kind of freaks out Mayweather, although Mayweather is just going to dance and score points the rest of the time. So I, I knew we were in for a fight like this. Now, I was hoping, and I think so was everybody that watched this, was we'd get to see some sort of a, a at least a knockdown, if mm. not a knockout. Like you right. thought, you, get, you come on, you were one of the world class boxer fighting a YouTuber. The least we should get out of this is a, is a fucking, yeah. uh, you know, a good licking, it right? Smells yeah. fishy to me. It smells very fishy to me. It smells like they made a deal and he said, look, here's a deal. We'll fight. We're going to make a shit ton of money. Don't knock me out, but let's make it competitive. Let's have fun with it because guess what's going to happen now? The money goes up. Well, the money going to keep going up. If, so long this is as the inevitability of these types of fights because it's all money driven. There's no like uh, uh, purity of the sport of it. So no. I, okay, I, I mean, obviously, I was the one that was out of the three of us that was really predicting that this is where it's yeah. going to go. And I have to say that even being that person watching, I'm, I'm a little. I'm a little bummed for the sport because it's not, it's definitely not going away. And like you said, this, they were already talking about a second, told you running it back. Yeah, you know? this is bullshit. Or it's his, lame, or his dude. brother. And, and so this is WWE. And, but, and yeah. it's crazy because we're going to pay. People obviously, I mean, they wouldn't do it if no one was watching and no one's paying. With I can't wait till yeah. a boxer goes in there whose pride is, you know, <clears throat> more important to him than his wallet. And he's in there, and he says, "No, nah, I'm gonna." They're not gonna find one. I'm gonna put yeah, exactly for a hundred million dollars. They're not gonna find one. <laughs> yeah, they're they're just gonna get somebody that's down and out and needs money, and so then so, they'll do whatever. So what we'll you're paying more? So what you guys think? And so I don't know if I subscribe to this. So and my buddy thinks this too that you know they there was a behind the do door handshake like you know let's go let's out make there. it fun it's let's make it fun but let's not like try and really win or kill each other over this and like let's just go make millions. I don't know if I subscribe to that. I, I mean, I feel like yeah, because boxing's never well, done stuff like that before. Tell me well, this: it's not that. It's not that I don't think for that reason. I really feel like I think I feel like Logan Paul was trying his hardest. I feel like Mayweather and Mayweather said this: like he didn't even train that hard for yeah. this fight. Yeah. He knew he showed up. That's yeah, part of the story, bro. Yeah. I think it's part of the story. I think he's gonna make shit up to set like because people are like, why didn't you knock him out? I didn't mm -hmm. train. I'm 44. I mean, it's so second nature. To I'm him, smaller. No, dude. I think exactly that. I think they're looking at how much money. Think about it. May, first of all, he may be known as the most elusive, best defense of all time. He's one of the greatest boxers. Very smart businessman. Very yeah, smart very business man. Mayweather's known as being one of the best businessmen in boxing. I would not be surprised if behind closed doors, they said, how much money can we make off of two or three fights? Forget the one fight. How many, mu much money can we make if we stretch Well, how did it, Adam, how did it stack against like Conor McGregor uh, Mayweather? Like, what was the difference? Well, because that I, one I thought was pretty entertaining. I did. I thought McGregor was way more entertaining. Yeah. yeah. I don't think, see, I think the deal would have been different with McGregor because McGregor and him are actual fighters. And they're going in there to see who can win. That's what I would say. Yeah. Again, I don't know how. I it felt to me like 
Logan Paul was really trying. It felt like Mayweather was just light years ahead of him skill wise and knew that he could dance around him like he did. I mean, to me, I don't know if it was staged, which again, I, I don't think I would uh, being a betting man. I wouldn't bet against you on that, by the way. So even though I'm debating you a little bit right now, mm-hmm. I wouldn't put money on saying that you're wrong and I'm right in this situation. I didn't think it was staged. I felt like it's exactly what happened. You have a, a fighter like Lo- who's not even a real fighter like Logan Paul, and then you have someone like Mayweather who is unbelievably skilled and talented and knew that he could go in there and just dance around him for a while, and so he got in there and he sparred with him for that. That's exactly what I mean. So I don't think it's necessary like, all right, round four, you do this. Right? I think it's literally... Let's go in there, and the idea is let's see if we can make it Don't last. Don't make me look too bad. Exactly, yeah, yeah. and then let's see what happens. With but the I, second. I think Logan Paul was trying his ass off because I think if, I think that's a game. Sure, he, he wanted could to try get one on him. Yeah, yeah it could, exactly. It, it would it, benefit him. It, exactly. If if he got him, then oh my god, would that open the door for a rematch? It would open the door for him finding another real fighter. I mean, if Logan went, it only it only doesn't pan out if uh, if for Mayweather if Mayweather loses. Right. right? Mm-hmm. If Mayweather loses that, that's that's the worst thing that could happen. Right, I mean, because then everybody's he ain't like, gonna get knocked out by right. Paul. There's no way, and so that's what I mean. Nobody could knock him out, and he fought the best of the best of all time. No amateur boxer is gonna knock him out. His defense is insane. I would, you know, what I would like to see. I'd like to see Pacquiao in there with because he's a he's a brawler, yeah, and he's not gonna dance around. He's gonna sit there and trade punches. And that's a whole different fight, in my opinion. Mayweather yeah. is is very technical, totally different. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't know if it matters, but at the end of the day, this is a really interesting time in sports right now. I mean, the fact that Showtime signed Jake Paul now, that's I mean, so crazy. you're talking about a, a a boxing. I mean, this was not they're not like the other organization that is you know into entertainers and they're yeah. going a different route. I mean, they they're you now are Showtime seeing, is the Showtime shit. was boxing. Yeah, that's yep. right. So, Back in the day. so show and they still are. I mean, yeah. they they're still the the main the main pay per view for boxing. So you got to you see them signing someone like a Jake Paul, just shows you that the tide is turning. That they they cannot ignore. The, the, they the follow draw. the money. Yeah, yeah they, they can't it's ignore it's going. It, it's always been about entertainment and money. It's just always the way. So then what happens? Does this mean that, like, because you would rather see, and this is true right now, right? Like, you would rather see if you've got Will Smith uh, versus, you know, name another person who's got yeah, a, a Chris Pratt or something. Yeah, right? Like, we, we all know who they are as actors, and if they both were kind of picking up boxing. I'd rather see that than like Superhero Showdown. Yeah, two regional yeah. or, you know, I, state champion. Right. Yeah. So, and and they each have, you know, what is Will Smith up to? Like 50 or 100 million followers on Instagram or something like that. And, you know, so and Chris Pratt probably up there too. Like, you know, how easily they can draw. Uh, you know enough people to pay the forty nine bucks to, f- I to watch the fight. Feel terrible for yeah. because here is the the fight game. It's killing the sport, dude. The fight game is totally. crazy. Like you, people are, and by the way, it's always been like it's this. only this sport though because this wouldn't work basketball. Nobody gives a shit no. about Will Smith and Chris Pratt playing <laughs> no. basketball against no. each other because neither one of them have that skill. It would be boring to yeah. watch. And but a fight, you must see still, someone get knocked. It's out. a fight. You're yeah, right. you know what I am saying. And so there is. A- and again, listen, bo- it's always been like this in fighting. Like, do you know how many incredible like CrossFit came in? And- and then did that to weightlifting. Yeah. It's the same thing. It is. Well, okay, so it's in boxing, do you know how many incredible fighters never got an opportunity to fight for the title because they weren't entertaining enough to watch or they were a bad matchup well, for the champion? We, we see that with the uh, UFC. Many people say that about Conor McGregor, that yep. he, got la- he got handed a bunch of fights that, yep. uh, I don't know if I fully agree with that because he's he's – won a lot of a good oh, fights sure. too. A lot but, of tough fights. But supposedly, you know, he is avoided also the people that would have challenged but him just, the most. But here's the fight game is you train your ass off forever. You get your head bashed in in training. You fight your ass off. And the goal is one day, and it's a very small, you know, percentage chance that you're going to at one day make a lot of money doing this. And so you're grinding. You're getting your ass kicked. You're crushing. You're making dirt. You're having to work two or three jobs to support yourself. And then you see this YouTube kid go in there and Make twenty million dollars with Mayweather, you know. Like I, I would be so upset. It would, it would. I don't know what I would do. I know it would frustrate mm-hmm. me as as an athlete. But then at the same time, too, you can't knock Logan Paul and his brilliance. Of course. Oh yeah. Like kudos to They're him. Pioneers. Like, I mean, right. I mean, thing. for for build for building the audience they built, and then to have the the awareness to. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wouldn't even put it past this kid to have had the foresight to do this to know. Like, listen, I've got a massive 
following, if I pick up a sport like fighting and just start, you know, practicing it, get some good at throwing some combinations, mm -hmm. I could start calling out some other people. And we and I don't know if he ever saw that it would end up being someone as big as Mayweather that he would get actually get that call or whatever. But I mean, it's not that's not well, a bad aren't, strategy. Aren't you seeing this now too in our space in the fitness space? Like the strong men were like setting up all these fights now, and you see Steffi Cohen, and you see oh these, yeah, she did fight. Yeah, these little exhibitions that they're trying to fight to cash in because apparently boxing now is the next thing where people are getting a nice cash. Well, grab. it's the one. It's this one sport that doesn't matter at what level you are. It's always it's a fight. It's a fight. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So that's where this is really unique. That doesn't work with anything else no. baseball soccer football i mean yeah, all I, those i challenge you to pull like yeah no one gives a, <laughs> if you're not good at it nobody gives a shit but this is the one where if you're really bad at it you might get your ass kicked and so i'm curious to see you get your ass kicked so yeah it's just like schoolyard playground like somebody calls somebody out and you're like yeah, yeah and then everybody's like fight i'll yeah. tell you what i thought was the the funniest thing about all of this was logan paul comes out and he has a Diamond chain. Doug, maybe you can look this up so the guys can see this. So look oh, up, uh, up. Lo Logan Paul's uh, necklace fight. You know, maybe that'll pop it up. So he has this diamond chain with a gold plated uh, framed Pokemon card. Oh, God. <laughs> cool, dude. <laughs> Wow. You're making all this money, and that's that's this how guy, you're you know, playing. This guy gets laid. You know how what does it this is? happen? <laughs> what, what kind of world do we live in, dude? Yeah, he grew up with YouTube. Yeah, like he's, hey, that's his that's his jam. It's all about making yourself a parody. You know what I mean? Like, how ridiculous can I make myself? Because that's what I makes mean. Money. Which Pokemon is that matters? It's yeah, a it million dollar card. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So so he's basically showing off that he has a, a it, million dollar it, it necklace. Is. Well, exactly. It's, it's the new gold grill. That's no, that's exactly what it is. I mean, that's been obviously popular forever is to do these crazy chains that are over the over the top. Like this is the but and again, pioneer, you're right cuz who's gonna, you know hey. you know people are going to do this hey, what's now. Gonna be he's the, creating a market just by doing that's that. That's right. right. Yeah, back in the that's day ridiculous. back in the day boxers would buy like rare tigers and yeah. animals, right? What are they going to do next? Like those oh, chimeras, those so half pig half Mayweather <laughs> Mayweather, okay, check this out. Look at, totally dude. You know? look, look up Mayweather two-headed lizards. Um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Doug, look up Mayweather's what, is uh, what he his, his outfit that he comes out into. So he was in all alligator skin. Wow. So his outfit was over the I mean, literally, these two guys came out with probably millions of dollars of jewelry and clothes is, on the, on them when they came out. No, this is T-Rex leather. And then they come out. <laughs> it's the rarest shit in the world. You know, there's yeah. there's rappers that are walking them down. And so, like I mean, it's uh, it's got to be so if, if you are like an, an amateur boxer, you've been fighting for 10 years. I feel like uh, it's the worst of humanity. You want to kill your TV. You're yeah, just like, I can't believe this is happening. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's, All right. So speaking of craziness, yeah. I'm about to blow your mind minds right now oh please do like seriously blow your minds you guys both watched army of uh the dead right yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. okay do you know the character that plays the helicopter pilot that girl mm -hmm. okay yeah T did, teak or whatever or what? she's a stand-up comedian yeah tigo or T something like that yeah, okay did you guys know that she was completely cgi in the whole movie what get the fuck out of here she was not in the movie do you she know wasn't who, in there? do you know who originally played that character who chris delia <gasps> After the scandal, they pulled him out. During the sex scandal thing that was going no, on, no they CGI'd the, her over him. Wow! And so the whole time, I had no idea. The whole time watching it, you could do that. That's that's a, apparently, old, you could do that. Dude, they, he got he got woke, cleaned up. Just bro, washed, yeah. Just they washed with they a chick too. Away. They straight up <laughs> washed you away. They stalined him. You know, Stalin used to do that, right? You have people wiped out in pictures after yeah. you kill. They literally, Chris Dahlia played that part. Dude, that just blew my mind. Yeah, sure. Doug, maybe you can look it up. Army of the Dead CGI actor or actress. I didn't know. No. They CGI'd her over it. So Batista never met this this person. Never met her, them because they never acted. Whoa. In the movie. And I could not tell. That's how good it was. I, I didn't know that. It could not Well, she tell. didn't really interact with anybody. I, I, I'm trying to think of, of some scenes yeah, where, see, look, where there was crossover. See how they're C they CGI and filmed it separately? That so she was is never- that Chris, Is that Chris Delia in the back right there? Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. Look at that. They replaced Delia. Is it Delia or Delia? I think it's Delia. Is it Delia? One of those I think, two. I don't know. Wow, that's crazy. Blew my mind. So what? Do you have any idea? So how far did you read this article? That's crazy. Did, did he get screwed out of the money? Did he get? I it? have no idea. Well, but I know they in, pulled him out of the movie. In the in the in the. In the so remember, I, this is another thing that I speculated on the future of what we're going to see. Okay, and this is definitely the the movement in this direction with CGI getting this good. Is in the future, 
Tom Cruise will not even have to go show up to the movie. He can just rent his his yeah. CGI version exactly. of him, right? Like once you have once you have a you own your brand, your yeah. look, like everything about you, the way you talk, like so you can sell that, I'm right? Sure. And, and I feel Trade like it. I feel like we're gonna see and imagine you could do multiple movies at once. So imagine there's like a a, a version, and this is where the trans. This is my prediction here. Okay, this is what the transition oh, will okay. look like. This okay, be fun. Let's yeah, speculate, speculate let's, here a little bit. Okay, this is what it's gonna look like. So. Tom Cruise will have, I'm just using him as an example because he's popular, right? But he will have a CGI booking fee and then he'll have a real live booking fee and it'll be like crazy difference. It'll yeah. be like, if you just want my CGI version of me, it's a, a really cheap rate. So like your low budget films can afford somebody like a CGI. You know who's going to go crazy with this? Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> the guy fucking is in every movie. Every movie now. He's turn shit yeah, down. Him and Kevin Bacon, they're just like, yeah, we're cashing yeah. in. I'll, I'll do it. But well, so no, here's seriously. The, though. Well, here's the problem with CGI now. The way it works now is you still have to film all the scenes. You're just in front of a green screen. Then they have screen, excuse me. Then they have to digitally insert you into the movie. So it's not like you're not working. Now the difference is you don't have to be on location. You don't have to fly somewhere. Right. All that stuff. But I don't know if it costs more or less. Yeah. Because CGI can be. Damn well, expensive. You've seen right some now, of these, right? these Star Wars remakes uh, and uh, where, where you saw Luke even as young Luke coming in. Yes. And, and so there's ways that now that they can even just do the full CGI and just like take your voice and all that kind of now, stuff and just organize it. Now that's my prediction. Yeah. That's, my prediction that's is, insane. is that CGI is going to get so good that you're not going to have live actors at all. That's and what I'm saying. No, you're not even going to have people's likeness. You're going to create the perfect character and then Paramount is going to own yeah. that character. Well, you've seen people uh, do that. We, we pulled that up a long time ago on Instagram where there's accounts where there's just CGI, like they just made up a character and, yeah, and they have like following millions them. of followers, yeah. right? Yeah. So, I mean, I that's, know. yeah, that's really Doug, what does that say? Bizarre. Up there? It says that they spent millions uh, digitally removing, yeah, see, they re digitally removed Chris D'Elia and then replaced it with this uh, wow, particular that's, actress. that's a crazy decision to make, too. I mean, they lost millions of dollars before they even released it. Well, it's because when they did the movie, obviously, Chris Delia, nobody knew that he was texting or whatever, <laughs> messaging yeah. underage girls. That comes out, whether it was true or not. It, so they're like, we got to remove it. Well, nothing ever, I mean, that that is crazy considering that they never proved it, right? I mean, did he, he didn't get in trouble, did he? I don't know. That's I, a good question. No, I, I don't think he did. I know uh, Callan didn't, that's for sure. Yeah, so Boy, I mean, that's got to be the ultimate... Like fuck! You you finish the movie, you're getting paid to do the movie, and that's they're like, what, "Sorry, we're gonna take you out of it." So that's what I want to know. Can do that. I want to know if if that if he can countersue now. Well, or, or if he still got his money. He probably still got paid. You think so? I bet. I bet you. I wonder. See, actually. Chris, see if Chris, yeah, you're right. See he, Chris Delia get paid for Army of Dead. He must know. have had to honor the contract. Well, I think. Uh, here's. I wonder yeah. if it's something like this though. I wonder if you get paid to do it, and then you get paid if the movie makes a certain amount. And so because he, they never actually showed him on screen, he mm. only made the amount to do the work and didn't make the amount to actually be shown in the movie. Does that mm. make sense? Yeah. Mm. Or maybe those contracts don't exist because this isn't something that's ever happened before. Yeah. I, I've never heard of that before. Where, isn't that weird? Where they, they remove an actor like that. Oh, I've, I've never heard of talk that. Talk about a bold move, though, to spend millions of dollars doing something like that. That's interesting. I know. Now, I want, if his contract was voided, though, then that's a different story because that's probably what he would have been paid. So then whatever. Like, wow. But this does, I mean, this does point in the direction that this is where we're going with this CGI that... You know, yeah. the future may be less and less. I mean, if you're an actor, it's got to be a little scary then, right? You'll get replaced. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're going to get replaced. Wipe you cleanly. Yeah. Right? If pretty soon, it's not going to be actors that are going to be paid a lot of money, but it's going to be creators of CGI characters. Mm, yeah. You're going to be some kid in the, <laughs> with, you know, lives in your mom's basement, really good with your computer. I was yeah. watching a, a Wally again with my, my son. Oh, I love that movie. It's such I, a good movie. And I, and I do just think that it's, it's, it looks like it's going to be accurate. I just feel like that's... We are heading in that direction. We, I mean, they, I, they do a good job of depicting that. The you know? rascal scooters I, are still out there I, in full force. It made me sad when I watched it precisely because I thought, oh, this is a little too close yeah. to home. I was at the mall, in fact, with Jessica this weekend. We took the baby there to take him for a walk and to get him to go to sleep. And so we're just in the, in the mall. And I'm noticing how many people are walking around on their phones. 
And I'm like, as soon as they make a screen that appears in front of your face that does all the stuff, that's mm-hmm. it. We're we're going to be in crowds alone all the time. Yeah. People are going to be walking around and nobody's going to see each other. Well, this was my experience. Dude, by the way, I had I'm to be- start tripping people again. Yeah. Again? I- what do you mean again? <laughs> <laughs> like, when, like when I was younger. You know? Yeah. He's, I stopped. Oh, you're not paying attention here. Well, when, the- when did you stop doing that, Justin? I, did, I haven't 20s. stopped. The, t- <laughs> the tough part is Can't that, I mean, it. I there there's the other side that, man, I'm, it's, a, it's pretty cool, right? So- I mean, I uh, I went to DMV this weekend, which talk about a, a fun weekend, right? Oh, awesome! It, such oh, a, that's a wonderful example of government efficiency. Oh I tell you. my god, <laughs> they, they love when you forget one little item. So I show up. Okay, eight eight a.m. is when I uh, it opens. So I get down. I'm like, I'm going to be there 10, 15 minutes early. So I drive all the way down to DMV. Line <clears> probably <throat> already out the door. Around the building twice. Around the building twice. Wow. I've never even seen so so much technology. You would have thought somebody famous <laughs> yeah. was there, right? So it was insane. So then I go and first of all, fi- like I had to ask so many people, like where does this thing begin? And everyone's mm-hmm. like pointing in different directions. I finally find the back of the line. Mm-hmm. So I, it, it's like ten to eight. It's finally eight o'clock. Then the doors open. Some people are filing in. I'm in this crazy long line that's snaking around. Eight twenty, eight thirty. I get to the front line where I get handed a ticket that says "Come back at two p.m." Wow! So I get a ticket wow. that says "I." Now, luckily, it was that Smart. far. It, now I had to drive, so I was. It's about thirty-five minutes or so from the house, and so I had to drive down there. Katrina was. Uh, she was somewhere with Max. Camera where her Max went. And so I was like, okay, well, lucky I, it's that far of a gap that it makes sense for me to come home and hang out with them and then come back. It would have really sucked if it was like two hours later. Then I'm like, what do I do? You know? So anyways, I come back at two to wait in line again for <laughs> like an hour and a half. And this time, it, this is my point. It was to your point of, you know, phones and screens, everybody in line. Nobody is talking to anyone. All of us are on our phones because yeah. you're standing in this line with nothing. It's DMV. There's nothing well, to, to the defense at. in that environment. I think that's Thank God. completely right. yeah, like no. a savior. I answered like 150 DMs. I can't remember the <laughs> last time I cleared that Just many. cleared everything. Yeah, I, I cleared so many DMs. That, that, I don't remember the last time I got that many done because I was just standing in this line. I had nothing else. Now, to were do. you okay? Did you get what you needed to get to so, do? Okay, so... Okay, so Jerry uh, had everything ready for me ahead of time. So I told her what I had to do for uh, getting my license and all that stuff of that. And she, I, so she looked up on DMV, she called down there. You need this form, this, this, this. Had everything all printed out for me in a manila folder, ready to go. So I just had to go take my stuff, right? Katrina, you know, I told her, I said, listen, I said, DMV is like, I'd rather get teeth pulled, by the way, than go to fucking DMV. Oh, man. Literally. I would I rather, I would it's... rather, no, I would rather get teeth pulled I'm than go kinda, to DMV. I think I'm with you on yeah. that. Yeah. And yeah. I'm still so sore, though. I'm, t- I'm, I'm stressing to Katrina. I was like, hey, did you, do you know, did you make sure Jerry went through? She goes, no, I actually got on and double checked her work because I know what a headache DMV is. So <clears throat> I get all that. I have, I can't remember the last time I have, I don't get anxiety. I have anxiety while I'm waiting in this line because it's already been this all day long ordeal. Like, geez, if I forget one thing. That's right. And they only take in walk, they only take walk-ins on Saturdays. Otherwise I got to set appointments and appointments take like three months to get this, get an appointment in here. So I'm like, I have all this anxiety of the, my whole day being wasted, getting up there and then potentially like one thing. And so like, I'm going, oh my uh, God. Did you use blue ink? Oh, sorry. You know, some shit yeah, like that. Bro, yeah, they're exactly. seriously like that. Now I'm about to go and, I, and I'm like freaking out. Like what happens? What happens? And I'm like, you know what, Adam? You just, okay, you got to win this this girl over right away as soon as you sit down. So I totally like flirt, bro. Like get up there. She yes. she sits me down and, and I sit down. and like, it's hot in here. <laughs> no, not like that. <laughs> not so not like that. Office. Like like friendly yeah. flirt, right? Yeah. So I guess. Oh, oh, I dropped that pencil. Let me pick I, it up I quick. Sit down and the first thing I say is like, wow, it's a new DMV. Who like, does your hair? I go, wow, yeah. this this place is amazing. I'm like, and you guys are all so friendly. I've never been to a DMV that's like this. And Just she's, lying. Oh, she looks at me, she goes, <laughs> are you messing with me right now? I said, no, like I was walking, I was waiting in line and like everyone's smiling and the, every, as soon as you sit down, everyone's friendly with them. Like, this is such a great experience. I said, my, I've never, I have to, to be honest with you, I had a lot of anxiety coming here today and just already seeing the way you guys are with your customers, it's just amazing. And I'm so bad. Just lying. Oh, just bullshitting. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, oh, you know, like, oh, yes. well, what can I do for you today? Like, well, I, I try. Yeah, yeah. So I go, well, I need to. And I pull out all my stuff out of the manila folder. So I'd like to uh, get my, my license and stuff. And if I can get my registration handled today, if possible, uh, for transferring over here. And she's like, okay, well, do you have that? I'm like, yeah. Do you have the-? Yeah. And she goes, and your social security card. Oh. And I go. I could just t- tell by your face you were 
Oh like, yeah, and I go. I go. Oh, that. Who carries that on that? I go. Oh, the the website didn't say I needed to have that. And she goes. Oh, oh yeah, you need to have that. And oh I'm, my god. Now, luckily, you could see she could see the fit my look on my face. How I was just oh freaked out. And then because we started on the right foot, she's like, "Well, do you have this? Maybe we could use this. Maybe we could use that." You know, and then I'm like, oh my God, well, let me call my wife real quick and see if she can email this over to me or what we can get or what will work. She goes, do you have an, a W-2? Because if you have a W-2, I need something that has your legal name on it with your social security. It needs to be on this. She goes, what about your, uh, you know, 1099 for your tax return? And I'm like, okay, well, I have, I had my tax return, but I didn't have the form that I need to fill out, which is what she needed. And so she spent like a good 30 minutes with me on the phone with Katrina, like digging through our emails uh, to find something. She should have never done that. Never. 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 Yeah. DMV is not like that. If you don't have something, they literally go like, oh, you need that? Come back. And they move on to the next person oh. because they have a long line. But because that, I swear to God, because I started off the you, conversation. You turn on the Adam chart. Oh, she was so willing to work with me. And eventually Katrina found an email that was like an old W-2 that I had that had my name and my social on it. She took and she actually took my phone, emailed herself, then printed it off on the DMV. When has DMV ever done some shit like Never. that? Yeah. Never. Never. She gets my phone. She emails herself. She gets the, she gets help to come over to print it, size it right. Like this is what happens dude. when you have a monopoly. If DMV was privatized, no way they would survive. I'm, I'll, I'll line around the block. Whatever. I go to this company over here. There's a way faster. And the crazy part what a of joke. What the crazy part about this is that I had this triple checked. Jerry went back. I mean, this is what Jerry's a badass, right? We all know that she is like on top of everything for us in this business. Yeah. So she's already thorough as it is. And then I was stressed out about it. So Katrina's like, I made sure wow. I double checked. I went on the website. This is everything that you need. And then I get up there and I'm missing what they need. I'm like, son of a bitch. I would not have been able to do that. I would have uh, lost my shit. It worked out. I'm, I'm, uh, it's official. I'm good. Should have it in two weeks. But boy, was that freaking. Yeah, but you're good now. Mind. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank yeah, goodness. I'm good now. All <laughs> Although to get, I wasn't able to register the car. There's a bunch of other loopholes, which I like. I said, could you tell me everything that I'm gonna need when I come back here? Mm -hmm. What I need to do before? Is there an order I need to have it? Like I took like these like super thorough notes that so when yeah. next time I come in to do that, I'll oh get my everything gosh. handled. Hey, hey, have you? When's the last time? I want to ask you guys this. When's the mm -hmm. last time you guys saw uh, Sylvester Stallone? Like, uh, like a, re a recent picture or video of him. Mm. That's a good question. I thought I saw him on an interview like a few years ago, maybe. So I, 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 he's done the Expendable movies, and that's. Is it, is he have social media? Is he on? on yeah, he's so he's on pretty, Instagram. Pretty fit uh, still. He's on Instagram, and I haven't seen the guy in a long time. And I was just on uh, Joe DeFranco's podcast. He asked me a question about Rocky because he's a big Rocky fan. It got me thinking about Sloan. I wonder what he's up to. That guy's seventy five years old. You guys know that? He's seventy. I'm that's looking, that's I'm so looking crazy. at his Instagram right now, bro. He looks. Amazing. Now, now, the way he moves and the way he looks, if you don't know his age, you think, oh, man, he's kind of moving a little stiff and a little old. Then when you consider he's 75, boy, that's a miracle of, of Western medicine, I tell you. The the hormones that that guy, because I know he's on, he's been on hormone therapy for years and years and years. Right. He also trains his ass off. He also eats right. The dude is shredded, muscular, and just looks insane at yeah. 75 years old. He looks crazy. There's, some, there's something to all that. He finally surpassed the Arnold. The kitchen sink and everything. Because, you, you know, there was always this whole thing between him and Arnold, and Arnold was obviously, you know, Mr. Olympia. But yeah. now he looks way better than... Yeah, than, Arnold kind of let himself go for a bit, but then he started coming back because he was going to do more movies yes, again. Yes. And so he's stored, sort of getting back in shape. But, but, uh, but if you watch Stallone... Sylvester so Stallone's always been shredded. You watch his workouts. He's strong. He's mobile, especially when you consider his age. He's got really good uh, mobility, good strength. Good Bro, movement. he looks phenomenal, dude. Yeah. It's insane. He looks phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah, for 70-something years old. That's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy to me. Speaking uh -huh. of movement and mobility, uh, Organifi's, I want to make this announcement, Organifi's having a promotion for their Move supplement. Oh, so you, you really like that. I think you used it the most. I do, mm. and it's really, really good. So it's really good for reducing inflammation, improving mobility, in combination with a good mobility program, uh, it works wonders, right? You don't want to just take something, reduce inflammation, then you're like, oh, I feel better. You need to correct the issues that are the root cause. Right. But in combination, what it does is it allows you to do better mobility and allows you to move that you need, you know, move. Now, do you take you that to. like at the end of the day, uh, typically, if you're going to uh, take it after like a hard session of training? No, I, just, I don't take it uh, specifically around training, but I do take it a couple times a day, especially when I'm noticing that I'm a little stiff. Mm. But what they have right now is- Yeah, what's the promotion? The next two weeks, I believe you buy one bottle and you get one free. Oh, nice. So it's the organic- if I move, buy one, get one free. But look at the ingredients. Uh, Turmeric, yeah. Arctic pine bark, 
astaxanthin, holy basil. Yeah, people get mad every let's time they see holy basil. Yeah, what's now holy, basil? Go, holy basil? Holy <laughs> basil. <Yeah. laughs> You've been gone too long. Is there like the basil and there's holy basil? Yeah, it's, it's like basil. It, listen, but it's, it's holy? It, it's blessed. But it's blessed. Yeah, it's, <laughs> no, holy it's, holy basil is a- It's divine. You know this why that's a, funny to me? Because remember you used to make jokes about like when we were making fun of different supplements and it's like, this is blessed whatever, monk, yeah, yeah. fruit, whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, you used yeah. to make jokes about that. So to see like something named holy basil on the on the I think I think it was called holy basil because it was valued among spiritual practitioners. Is that real? Yeah. Mm. So Ayurvedic medicine uses holy basil quite a bit. Ayurvedic is a big uh, supplement or herb yeah, or plant. They're big into spices. That's are you going to call bullshit, Doug? What's that look for? I'm not going to call bullshit. I think holy basil is also the Thai basil that mm. you'll get in your like Thai curries and things like oh, that. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. So it's a Southeast Asian basil, I, I believe. Oh, oh very okay. cool. I did not know that. But yeah, I know that they use it in Ayurvedic medicine and it actually helps balance out stress. It's got some adaptogenic properties. Mm. But all those ingredients, none of them are like you know, ibuprofen or aspirin. It doesn't work that way. It actually helps your body balance out its inflammatory process. So it's yeah. a healthy supplement. So I found like the a, a real manly show. For you guys, <laughs> why? Because we've been talking. About you guys have been talking clicks. about chick shows like up the yin yang, right? Okay. Like, which is great. That's fine, but it's really hard to find a good manly show. What's a manly anyway. show? Yeah, okay, so watch Longmire. So it, it's basically it's about this sheriff in Wyoming who uh, you know has all these like crazy murder cases and all this kind of stuff that he's trying to solve, but. It's just like, it's a depiction of a real, like one of the last kind of like manly dudes out there. Like there's just no, all these depictions of men now are so weak and yeah. pathetic. So I'm sorry, <laughs> but that's true. They're just the, the, the one that you're kicking aside. Like, oh yeah, that was great. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, it, it's always like pathetic, you know? So, so anyways, he's a strong character. He's, he's, he's masculine and it's cool. Wow. There you're, it is. You're talking about masculine and stuff. You're, you posted a picture of your no-no. Right, the, my grandfather. Yeah, the him with the tire. That looked, you, was like a, was that's that? like a manly photo. It was not, it was in the 1950s. I don't know what the year is. It's him and his brother. They're in Venezuela. He actually went to Venezuela from Sicily because they there were opportunities there to start business. So he went there before he came to America, and they had a tire shop. And so it's a picture of him with his brother standing in front of the tire shop. And it's funny when you look at those old pictures. They were in their early 20s, maybe even late teens, but they look like they're he looks in their way 30s. older. It's yeah. because old pictures do that. Or either that or because the guy had been working hard labor since he was a child. So yeah. he might so, be 20, but he's actually 40. No, I old. have a different theory on that. I think it's because, like, and it really started, I feel like our generation was the beginning of this, but kids, like, dress and do a lot weirder shit than kids back then. Oh, you were a, like, there wasn't like when you were a kid, you were in the old, 19, you were, they're more stoic back yeah, then. Yeah. In the fifties, you were proper. Everybody had very similar haircuts. You dressed very similar. Like this generation, it's the opposite. Oh, if yeah. you're, if you're young, adolescence is stretched out. You look, you, I mean, but you, when you're young though, like when you're in your 20, like if you're 20 now, you're pushing the boundaries with haircut, piercing, tattoos, the way you dress, like- You live with mom and dad. You just- When my grandfather, <laughs> it's true. When my grandfather was uh, 13- Do you think it has to do with their haircuts? Yeah. I think it's all that. Listen, okay, okay fine. You're connecting two different things. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is- What I'm saying is- They live with mom and dad. I'm like, well, yeah. they cut their hair different mom, mom and they, they're they into different shit. Well, what <laughs> I mean- they live at home. What I mean is, well, my grandfather, in that era, when you're 22 years old, you have a family, you have a mortgage, you have your career- now, mm. 22 year olds don't have that. Yeah, 22 year olds are like, uh, okay, I get you. Can point. I still be on my mom and dad's insurance because I don't have a job yet? You know, type of deal. So you can fuck off more. Yes. It's, okay. it, adolescence has got stretched out for sure. Yeah. That, but I think that's the reason why those yeah. pictures look like that is because they are, even at 20, you're already dressing, prop, looking like you're in your, like a 30 or 40 year old yeah. today, right? Because. To a twenty-year-old today, I feel like stands out like a sore thumb compared uh, to a forty-year-old. Oh, today. you should hear the grant my story, the stories he tells me of those days and he, when he was in Venezuela with his brothers. Remember, there's eight men, uh, eight brothers, and he's like, "Oh yeah," I was like, "What was it like living over there?" Because you're not in your country. Oh, it was uh, it was hard, a lot of fights. I'm like, "What do you mean a lot of fights?" <laughs> oh yeah, we fight almost every day. We get in a fight with people because. They say something to us, and you punch them in the face, and this and that, <laughs> and I'm knocking this guy's face off, and I'm like, all the time, like that? You had to fight? I was, oh yeah, all the time. He's like, that's what it was like. That's you know. so like, wild. Holy cow, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Head over to mindpumpfree.com. We've got some new giveaways for all of our listeners, all totally free. Again, mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of this podcast.
Our first caller is John from California. What's up, John? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, so um, I have a couple of questions centered around the central nervous system and, and kind of still making progress in terms of strength and aesthetics without overtaxing the CNS. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if that's actually possible, uh, especially in terms of maintaining compound lifts. But in terms of context, uh, I lifted bodybuilder style pretty consistently uh, since high school. Um, I picked up rock climbing about a year ago. And I'm in my mid-30s now, so I'm really finding it difficult trying to balance training for climbing and kind of maintaining that physique and that volume um, and still pushing like the bigger lifts, like at least the big three. Uh, I've been pulling back resistance training for the last year, uh, trying to find a better balance between climbing, training for climbing, and actual lifting. Um, my theory is it's CNS rather than like muscular fatigue or tendon or ligament fatigue. So the question or the biggest question I have for you is, is there a way to improve strength or aesthetics without overtaxing the CNS? And I'm thinking of maybe doing like a big foundation day with the big three um, and then trigger sessions the other six days. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of just trying to figure out how to program around how, four days of climbing. Okay, it's four days of climbing. I was yeah. going to ask how many, how often. That's we're a good question. So four days, and uh, I'm assuming at least an hour or longer. You're climbing for uh, probably ninety minutes, and then I'm I'm calling it climbing, but there's also training for climbing, uh, things like that. I'm calling those four days climbing days, but some of it is just mm. like pull ups with, I mean, heavy weight pull ups on on Olympic rings, stuff like that. Cool. So those are my pull dates. I, I like his idea. Yeah, no, you know, so here's the thing. You asked if you can make aesthetic progress without hammering your central nervous system. That's the only way you can make progress is without taxing. This. So it doesn't matter what you're doing. Um, if your CNS is fried, mm -hmm. which by the way, this is important. Your CNS gets affected by much more than just exercise. Any stress will affect your central nervous system. So lack of sleep, a too restrictive diet, stress in your life. Crazy girlfriend. Mm, yeah, that'll mm. kill your CNS, uh, especially the crazy girlfriend part. Yeah. But but no, all, all joking aside, the only way you'll make progress is if the CNS is recovered and you feel good. So here's what I would do uh, with you if you were my client. First off, on your, your climbing days, I'm assuming you're doing a lot of volume, a lot of frequency, but not going to failure, which is a good thing, right? You're not treating it like a bodybuilding workout. You're practicing your climbing skills. So it's just lots and lots and lots of repetition and movement, which is good for what we're talking about. I think one day a week of resistance training, and I would focus entirely on three exercises or four exercises, uh, compound lifts. Um, here's the other thing to improve your climbing ability. I don't know how important it is for you to be a good rock climber. You might want to limit the amount of size you put on your legs. One thing you'll notice with really, really good rock climbers, they don't have huge legs, uh, huge legs, tend to be a detriment because obviously you have to pull that weight up. But aside from that, literally three or four exercises, compound lifts on you know one day a week, don't go to failure. You're doing the climbing. And then instead of trigger sessions, what will probably bring you more value is mobility. That, that, I think that'll help uh, the most. I would do shoulder mobility, wrist and hand mobility, because those areas tend to get hammered a lot with the climbing. Well, it makes the most sense for climbing, right? But for aesthetics, I, the trigger did. I mean, I, I like your strategy. I mean, I think it's a it's a good place to start, and then there's nothing wrong with molding that as you go along. Like, let's say, for example, you're running the one foundational day, and then you're doing the six trigger days, and you find that the trigger days are actually impeding on your climbing skills, and then I, then I would switch over to more mobility work, like Sal is saying, or maybe you split half mobility, half trigger days, and play with that a little bit. But I think overall, your strategy and the direction you're going with just one main foundational day with uh, you know scattered trigger or mobility days to replace the rest of your training. Because, I mean, when you, when you say aesthetics, aesthetics is a lot of times, too, just being lean, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't necessarily need to get much bigger. You'll be, if you lean out, which you will do if you're rock climbing and you're eating, eating healthy because you're exercising that much, uh, you'll, you'll look good, mm -hmm. you know? So it's really about uh, how much muscle you want to allow yourself to build to not hinder your rock climbing. Yeah. And one more thing, if, if you know, cause I know you're doing a lot of pulling, right? So you may think that you're, you, you want to avoid a compound back exercise, uh, for your lifting day. I would definitely avoid any weighted pull down or pull up movements. Cause you're doing that so much. But don't neglect rowing. Uh, one of the imbalances that I've seen in my uh, in my experience with rock climbers 
is they get very, very strong lats, um, but sometimes they get forward shoulder because of the lack of rhomboid and mid trapezius strength that matches it. So rows, really focusing on pulling the shoulder blades back, would help balance that out a little bit and maybe prevent shoulder problems that tend to plague uh, rock climbers. Okay, so stick to the big five for that foundation day, and then mobility or trigger sessions the other six days. Um, I, have you guys ever talked about a trigger session for abs specifically? I haven't seen that uh, anywhere. It to- I mean, it, you can do it for any body part, but mm. if you want to do it for abs, I mean, I would go crunches, active planks. You could do rotation with uh, with a band, you know, get some obliques, you know, some chops. I mean, really any exercise that's low to moderate intensity. Yeah, trigger sessions should be recuperative. So that's really where I would figure out like how many of these to structure in if it is you know providing that 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 type of like rest recovery element to it uh otherwise i would then shift it a little bit more towards mobility uh if it is impeding on that at all but um it for for what you're describing i think that it all sounds pretty pretty uh it's a great place to start yeah i think it sounds pretty good to me yeah no it's a great i think it's a great strategy where to start and then you just and i don't care how experienced all three of us are I would still have to probably change this based off of the feedback you give me. So yeah. uh, I, I would be looking, I'd say, hey, this is what we're going to start with this based off yeah. your goals. Would you tell me? I think you're going Tweak to and modify it as you go. That's right. Yeah. If I try to be greedy, hypothetically, because um, I used to be like a five day, six day a week kind of guy. If I try to bump two foundation days and just hold those, ideally, like like an anabolic style, ideally, you would space those out as much as possible, correct? To yeah. Keep that signal loud. I would, but more isn't better. So keep that in mind. Just because you can do more and tolerate more does not mean you're going to get faster and better results. In fact, you might actually get slower results. So sometimes we confuse how much we can tolerate with ideal amount because there's like a bell curve, right? The the right dose will give you the best results. You might be able to tolerate more, which is fine if you're trying to increase your work capacity and, you know, maybe stamina and that kind of stuff. But if you're looking for aesthetics, uh, doing more is not going to get you better, uh, get you there faster. If if you were going to do that, this is what I would do. So before I went and like mirrored that first, so I'd have like the the foundational day first. Like well, your strategy is perfect, right? And then let's say you want to get greedy and you want to push a second. My second like quote unquote foundational day would look more like a focus session day. Totally. So I would pick more isolation exercises. Here's where things like the leg press and leg extensions and leg curl machines. Yeah. This is where they would have Rear a lot of flies. Yeah, and, a lot yeah. of value here. So I would actually. You'd have your one big day, which is your compound lifting, which is going to be the deadlifts, the squats, the overhead press, bench press, rows. Those are the big movements you're going to do on that one day. And then if you're feeling good and you're like, okay, let me try and add another day. Do like a pump day, right? Yeah, do more of like a focus type session from like aesthetic, which is more like your isolation exercises, machine exercises, and first see how that handles, your body handles that before trying to uh, emulate another, uh, you know, compound lifting day, like your, your first foundational day. Does that make sense? That, that makes a lot of sense. I, what I've been programming right now is I've been programming a Monday, Wednesday, uh, the big five, well, the big four, because uh, Sal's right, actually. I've been neglecting pull uh, mm-hmm. because by default, I'm technically hitting four climbing, uh, four pull days. So I was trying to push and leg on uh, my foundation day. So I'm glad Sal actually said that. I'll include that fifth, uh, I'll include the, the fifth big lift, uh, the pull movement. Awesome. So thanks, thanks for that. Thanks for calling, John. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. No problem. All right. Have you guys ever worked with uh, rock climbers? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. And I, I mean, obviously smart guy, and I think he's uh, on the right track. I mean, yeah. and again, uh, one person, this may be too much volume. Another person, they could handle uh, adding another day in there. It's, and we wouldn't know that until we start testing yeah, when our theory. In, it's, it's amazing when your intensity is moderate, the amount of volume you can eventually work up to is tremendous. But when your intensity is high, mm-hmm. boy, do you get uh, limited. But yeah, with rock climbers, what I would notice, the issues I would have to focus on were forward shoulder because yes. there'd be so many pull downs or pull ups, I should say. They get these really powerful lats and then they'd get, they'd kind of have this imbalance with the mid back. And so you see this forward shoulder quite a bit. And, you know, that's okay for rock climbing, but it's not when you start to notice shoulder problems or shoulder pain 
So I would have them do stuff to kind of retract the scapula and then hand and wrist mobility because obviously they're using the hand so much. Oh yeah. Lots of mobility needs to be attached to that. It was interesting with rock climbers, like how strong, like how loud a signal they can get from their CNS oh, yeah. because it's so demanding on the body. People don't understand like how demanding that is like all the way to your fingertips, uh, you know, in terms of like being able to shuttle, uh, you know, that, that type of recruitment and strength. So, uh, I love rock climbers because they're, they're, they're easy to kind of mold into yes. a good strength uh, program. Yeah, their isometric strength was always it's, impressive. It's crazy. Our next caller is Abby from Wisconsin. Abby, how's it going? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for taking my call. I uh, just wanted to say that um, I love all the content that you guys put out, and I share it with uh, my clients and everybody that I love. Um, so my question today is, um, one thing that I've noticed when I start to, um, when I'm on the first couple days of my menstrual cycle, um, I feel like my lifts are definitely not, uh, I don't feel as strong in those first couple days that I usually do when I go through, um, any of my programs. Um, I just started, I'm actually in the third phase of MAPS Aesthetic and, one way that I've kind of noticed that I'm not feeling as strong is I, with watching my numbers, um, the numbers will kind of dip on the, those first couple days, kind of towards the end of the week there, I notice I start to gain some of that strength back. Um, I guess what I was looking for was maybe some suggestion on either anything to change in my diet or uh, anything for supplementation. Um, I do track my periods, so I know that's um, it's pretty accurate. So I know if I change anything, I can really kind of uh, tweak any of the days that I need to. Um, I'm also not on any birth control, so I don't know if that makes a difference. So, um, yeah, just wondering what you guys had for any suggestions for that. No, super, super good question. Also very common. So the first thing I want to say is this. In this it trumps everything else, okay? And this is for men, for women, uh, people who, who menstruate, people on birth control, doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the thing that trumps everything is to listen to your body. So if you feel more fatigued or less strength or your recovery is reduced, and this could be the result of, I mean, a million factors, right? It could be lack of sleep. It could be stress. It could be diet. And then in your case, you seem to be tracking very closely. It could be hormonal changes, Always listen to your body. All right, now let's get a little more general. Let's talk a little bit more generally in terms of the the, the cycle that a woman goes through. Um, and hormones change quite dramatically through the month. And so with that, I would say the best advice I've ever gotten, I talked to Dr. Jolene Brighton uh, at depth with this. We've actually had her on the podcast a couple times, and I talked to her off air off on this because at one point I had an idea to create a program uh, based around this. And so I asked the, actually asked her quite a bit of questions. And Dr. Jolene Brighton, as you know, is an expert uh, on this particular subject. And she said, you know, one of the best things you could do is go with the feelings that you have during your cycle. So a lot of women will notice their appetite will increase and will have more energy uh, during ovulation. Uh, in the beginning phases, they may notice that their energy is lower. They may notice their appetite drop. And so basically what she's saying is exactly what we say, which is listen to your body. So in those phases where you feel stronger, you feel more energy, go ahead and push yourself a little bit harder. In those phases where you feel like your appetite is higher, like, oh, I've got stronger cravings, eat more good food. That's okay to bump your calories on those days. On the times when you feel like you're, you're just not as hungry, it's okay to reduce your calories. And then when your energy is lower, reduce your intensity, reduce the, the weight that you're lifting. At the end of the day, this is going to, it's not going to impact your gains or your progress in any you know negative way. In fact, if you follow your body, you'll get better results and better progress than if you try to counter it. You know, if you say to yourself, gosh, I feel like I'm not as energetic today. I feel like I'm, you know, my my strength is a little low, but I'm supposed to push the intensity. So I'm just going to push the intensity anyway. That's the wrong approach. So Follow what your hormones are telling you because there's a lot of good information there. So you just have to listen to it. I definitely would uh, make sure you are following uh, Dr. Brighton. So Jolene Brighton, uh, Dr. Becky Campbell, and then Lori Christie King, I think. Th those three, I think, are some of my 
three favorite ladies that speak to this topic. Gabrielle Lyon, too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah Dr. Yeah, Gabrielle Lyon. Yeah, really Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, too. I'd add her in there. So those, those are four friends of ours that are really uh, experts in this field and arena. They speak to it a lot on their social media. So if you're not following them, I, I do recommend that. Now, Sal, I had a question for you that I, I use. I can't remember where I read this, but um, I, I did read that it it's not a bad idea to try and uh, replenish like uh, iron at these times because of the the red the red blood cells that you're losing. And so I would have clients do like a spinach salad with like raisins and stuff in it. Do you, do you see value in that or have you heard that? It, well, so it's it's obviously women tend to be anemic far higher rates than men because they lose blood uh, on a regular basis. In fact, for men, they actually recommend men give blood sometimes because we build up too much iron. But I, you would need to get a blood test for this because it wouldn't make a difference if your iron levels are fine. This is not all women. Uh, but yes, iron, B vitamins can also make a big difference uh, for some women. Uh, but it depends. It depends on the person. And something you can do is if you have a pretty good uh, physician, a pretty progressive doctor, you can ask to have these things tested. And then I would test them Make sure you test these nutrients at the heaviest part of your cycle because it doesn't make any sense to test it when you're feeling great or whatever. So time it. Time it for when your flow is heaviest, when you're probably at highest risk for nutrient deficiency. And then in which case, if you do see like, oh, you're borderline anemic during these periods of time uh, during the month, in which case supplementing with iron, even just cooking with a cast iron skillet. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of people don't know this. Well, that's the advice I yeah. would. So obviously yeah. I'm not a doctor and I would never recommend something like supplementing for something without finding out details. But I, I always felt that, okay, it, it wouldn't hurt to tell a client, like yeah. try and have a salad. That Consider has, it. Yeah, least, yeah, yeah. Spinach and raisins. Like you're, I'm not going to probably do any damage to somebody by mm -hmm. doing that, even if I don't see blood work. So I thought that was always like a decent advice, but you're right. I would definitely, before you go take an iron supplement, yeah. definitely go see. Yeah, because because the thing here, Abby, that I'm always cautious of is I could tell you, okay, during the, the luteal phase of your period, you should do this and during the whatever. The problem with that is individual variance. there's an individual variance, yeah. you know, there's always, so, the, you know, there's definitely this general truth with it, but I don't care if the book says you're supposed to feel a particular way. If you don't, I'm not going to train you yeah. that particular way. So at I, the end of the day, the advice is always I've had to I've had it. female clients that feel like superwoman during this time. And then mm -hmm. I've had the complete opposite. Women feel like I don't even want to get out of bed. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that much of a spectrum yep. here that, that listening to your body always trumps everything. Totally. I hope that helps, Abby. Yeah, definitely. That's, uh, that's definitely helpful. All right. So. Well, perfect. Thanks for calling. Awesome. Thanks for taking my call. No problem. Boy, you want to talk about the differences between biological men and women? Just look at the hormone changes that the swings a, yeah. that a woman will go through every month. Mm -hmm. We're like the same all the time. And we are, you know, it's like this doesn't matter what day it is, what whatever, it's like always the same. Yeah. But their hormone profile changes radically throughout the month and it, it you know you it even more important to listen to your body let's say like if you, you're trying to be hard-headed about what you're doing mm -hmm. but you're not listening to the fact that i mean imagine if as a man some days your testosterone was through the roof some days it was super low and growth hormone was different and insulin was there like you, you know you, you would have to listen to that right see what your, your body feels Res like. what are you about to say no i'm not gonna say Come shit on, dude. i know you're uh, he's resisting there's a joke there for sure yeah, I'm, I know. Uh, I'm holding back dude I'm trying <laughs> to be professional i know you today, are okay? i can see it on your face <laughs> you're going you're talking about how much the hormones fluctuate for women how inconsistent it is and i'm looking yeah. at Ju yeah. justin's about to say like, some shit right now i don't know how i'm gonna hold out that's three teenage guys no i definitely no i could just see it on his face i definitely think you should follow the those four ladies though i think they're all very yes. very smart yes. they, and they 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 center a lot of their content uh, around questions like this they're i think they're much well, much smarter than i am and experienced in this area yeah like you brought up there's there's just factors like that even with like heart rate variability yes you, you just see these things it, it fluctuates all over the place for people and if you're just trying to to go uh do this general type of programming and, and be consistent with it you have to adjust and, and you have to adjust on the fly based yep. on what your body's signals and, are telling you and what i love so much about dr jolene brighton is she talks to this because people are so un girls are totally uninformed. In fact, they'll go to the doctor and tell them, oh, I'm feeling really tired or 
I'm feeling a little bit more emotional or my app. And the doctor will be like, we can fix that by putting you on yeah. birth control or antidepressants or whatever. This is a, oftentimes a very natural cycle. Mm -hmm. And so it's good to be educated. So you think to, you don't think to yourself what's wrong with me, but rather this is normal. Well, I'm supposed to feel. This wasn't way. that the motivation behind beyond the pill, yes. which was Jolene's book. Yes, it was. I mean, that was the motivation behind yep, it. Absolutely. Our next caller is Nick from Maryland. Hey, what's up, Nick? How can we help you? Hi guys. Uh, thanks for having me on. So, um, as I've been doing more strength training over the last uh, four or five months or so, um, I've begun to develop my ulna bone seems to uh, experience a lot of strain. Um, it's only on one wrist, so I don't know if it's a overall structure thing or if it's a muscle imbalance. Um, but as I've gotten stronger, I've noticed doing like straight bar bench and things like that, um, the bone seems to push out, which turns my whole hand inward now. Um, I haven't had any injuries on it or anything like that, so I'm not too sure what the origin of it is. But somebody suggested it needs to be more of a, a wrist uh, stability strengthening solution. Yeah, Nick. So, so uh, this is common when people are utilizing a grip that is not ideal on the bar. Okay, so first off, you want a full grip. You want a tight, strong grip. You want to keep your wrist strong, uh, straight, which means. You may not be able to lift as much because mm -hmm. you might be, you might be, you know, you might have gotten used to a particular grip, which means you're stronger with a grip that's not beneficial. So change the grip. But here's what I would do first. First thing I would do is I would avoid barbell and I would stick to all dumbbells and I would maintain a real straight, strong grip that doesn't, uh, that doesn't cause pain in my wrist. Wait till the pain subsides. Then when you go back to barbell work, go much lighter and get used to a different grip on the bar or a way that doesn't hurt your wrist. I would also try something that's uh, pretty unconventional. Uh, if you have access to kettlebells, oh, you're going to go same place. Yeah, doing bottoms yeah up bottoms press. up press. Yeah. Uh, just because it's it, it's so revealing as to where you know you're not properly stabilizing. You don't have the strength to keep that uh, nice tight fist um, it, it, because it's going to be moving on you. It's going to be moving left to right. It's going to be moving front to back. Um, it might even try to rotate on you. And so you have to account for that while you're pressing it up super slow. And this is a very challenging exercise on its own, let alone somebody with wrist issues. So I would go very light uh, and, and really like try and work on that for quite some time until you feel like you have a solid, uh, you know, stable grip with that. I love that recommendation because that was the direction I was going to go. The other, Justin, I don't know there's names. You would know the names better than I would. Um, there's good uh, Indian club exercises too. I don't know if there's... Uh, like there are. There are wrist rolls and different types of uh, casting uh, movements that you can do with with the Indian clubs. Um, and and basically you can roll your wrist in circles, you know, different, uh, different directions. So there's plenty of that, plenty of videos on that. I think I've even done some of the videos on that as well, yeah. uh, but that would be very helpful for you as well. Yeah. So Nick, the thing you're going to want to be careful for, because it's going to be very tempting to wear wrist braces and wrist wraps yeah. so that you I started with wraps. Now I've gotten so used to it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause what'll happen is it's just, and I know why it's tempting, right? You don't want to go lighter. So you're like, Oh man, I'm lifting this much. If I wear the wrist brace or wrist wrap, I can continue to lift heavy and do this lift. But I, I, I caution you because if your wrist continues down this path, I mean, your hands connect you to everything you do with resistance training for your upper body. And even for some lower body stuff, I've known people who can't squat because of wrist problems because they can't put their hand uh, back on mm -hmm. the bar. So I would say go with dumbbells, go lighter and, and start to get used to a different grip, a strong, straight grip. And don't worry, you'll, event, you'll get back to where you were before, but then you won't be limited uh, by wrist pain anymore. By the way, this, I experienced this myself for a long time. For a long time, I, I pressed with a thumbless, you know, what they call suicide grip. My wrist would be bent back and I, I ended up getting good at it. And if I did another grip, I had to go lighter. So I was really hard headed about it. And I did what you did is I put the wrist wraps on, did the whole thing. And it, it just became a, a big problem. And it's like, okay, you know, I, I want to be able to work out without needing all these aids on my body. So I had to back off. It took me a few months, but then when I got back to where I was and then I surpassed it. And I, I was able to surpass it with better biomechanics. Got all right. it. All right, cool. Well, thanks for calling in, Nick. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. No problem. All right. I knew Justin was going to go that direction. I was like, yeah, that was, that was a good one. It Stole is that really me. tempting yeah. when you're working out and you notice a little bit of joint pain and you're hitting PRs mm -hmm. and you're like, do I work on mobility or do I just put on a knee brace? Or do I work on mobility or do I just put on 
wrist, you know, wraps or whatever. It's really ch- I, this was a big problem for me when me I was too. younger. I mean, I, 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 maybe Justin's the only one out of us that didn't do this as bad. I definitely did this with ever, almost everything. He I wasn't strong all- enough to have. Problems <laughs> with I stayed in the the lightweight uh, range of the gym, so I was just fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's. I mean, very common. This is one of those things that, especially, you do a, a lot of barbell work, yeah. and, and you're not addressing these things right away. It's just going to catch up to you, just like with the shoulder. Like any kind of position that's not ideal, you're going to end up uh, inevitably hitting that wall where it's going to talk to you with pain. Our next caller is Jacqueline from Ohio. Hey, Jacqueline, how can we help you? Hi, I just wanted to start by saying thank you, just like everybody else does. Um, I've really enjoyed your content and have definitely been utilizing your expertise that you guys put out there. Thank you. Um, so yeah, thank you. It's commendable what you guys are doing for the fitness industry. Awesome. Um, so essentially my question is while I'm cutting, should I be focusing on the absolute muscle number versus the muscle percentage? Because although I, I have a science background, so I understand the differences, but I was just curious which one I should prioritize mm-hmm. while I'm cutting. And if it's a bad thing that one's going down and one go- one's going up or vice versa. Yeah, no, this is a mm. great question. Okay. So for somebody listening right now, that's like, what is she talking about? Okay. Yeah. So absolute number would be total pounds of lean body mass, right? Percentage would be a percentage of your overall body weight. So let's say somebody loses 10 pounds on the scale, but loses two pounds of muscle. So that means eight pounds of body fat. They lost two pounds of muscle, but as a percentage of their overall body weight, their muscle mass percentage may go up because it's a percentage of your overall body weight. Okay, so this can be confusing because with body fat, it's very clear. What you want to look at with body fat is percentage. Total number is not that big of a deal. It's percentage that matters because you know body fat on a 200-pound man, if you slap that on a 100-pound man, all of a sudden, same body fat now makes that person much fatter because they have so much less lean body mass. But when it comes to muscle, it's a little different. Total makes a big difference. If you lose two pounds of muscle, you lose two pounds of muscle. You've lost two pounds of metabolically active, insulin sensitive, glycogen storing, strength producing tissue, right? So even though the percentage of your overall lean body mass goes up, you still lost some muscle. So when it comes to muscle, percentage, don't worry about that. Look at percentage of body fat. But what you want is you want lean body mass total number to go up. Now, there's one thing to be careful for, which is when you're looking at lean body mass, that's all non-fat mass. So that means if your water weight goes down, lean body mass obviously uh, measures as going down as well. And this will sometimes happen with body fat tests where you'll get tested and if it, if it doesn't test water in your body and then it may look like you lost lean body mass, but really you're just not holding as much water, especially if you go from a higher carb to a lower carb diet. So this is us talking about a cut, right? Because yeah. that makes a difference. If you're on the bulk, I'd also be careful just ch- chasing the the total the total number then, because that's well, the, as long the, as it's the, lean, right? But that, but you, if you're chasing the total number on a bulk, you got to be because then you turn into like the bodybuilders. What happens all the time, right? Where they just they bulk and oh man, I'm, I've added three pounds of muscle, four pounds of muscle, ten pounds of well, muscle. Well, then you got to look at body fat percentage, right? Right, right. right. Yeah. So which d- depending on the direction you're going depends on how I'm I'm looking at this, right? I'm I'm looking at this like if. If I'm on a bulk, I'm I'm careful not to be putting on too much body fat percentage uh, as my total number is going up because you could add five pounds of muscle, but if you had to put on 15 pounds of fat to get those five pounds of muscle, I'm I'm kind of overdoing yeah, you, it. Yeah, you have to consider body fat percentage with either one. Body fat percentage is always percentage. That's always going to be what you look at, whether you're gaining or you're losing. But when it comes to muscle, forget percentage of lean body mass. Look at total muscle or total, I should say, because it doesn't measure muscle, right? It's lean body mass. Look at total lean body mass. So percentage for fat, for lean body mass, total number is what's important. So as you get leaner or, or lighter on the scale, but you notice you're losing three or four pounds of lean body mass, so long as it's not water and you know it's probably muscle, you're going to notice some negative effects from that. You're going to notice maybe less strength, uh, slower metabolism, you know, possibly, for example. So always main, look at that number. Look at that total number for lean body mass. It's always very important. Okay. Yeah, no, that's, that's useful. I just, to answer the like cut or bulking question, I'm not really doing either. I was definitely bulking for a while just because I switched to lifting more often instead of cardio. And just like everybody says, uh, you're getting hungrier and hungrier and you're still losing weight and it's kind of mind boggling, but I eventually got to the point where 
um, the calories I was eating was super daunting for me. So mm. I just wanted to listen to my body and kind of cut back and just only eat when I was hungry. And oh, well, that's that's so, a good that's a good choice, Jacqueline. You know, I, I'm glad you said that because we talk so much about the importance of having lean body mass. But if it's at the expense of you feeling like you're force feeding yourself, right, or the your quality of life has decreased, then who cares? Which is actually yeah. a good place though, because this is the this is what I'm you always found your boundary. That's right. I'm always uh, seeking this place for my client. Right when I get a client. Uh, doesn't matter weight, uh, fat loss, muscle build. I I want to get to a place where I've ramped that metabolism up so much that you look back at me as a client. You're like Adam, yeah. I just you, this is a chore. I'm a chore to eat this much, and I'm like awesome. Now let's just listen to your body. Eat when you're hungry. Let's not worry about getting to a certain amount of calories. You know, but stay fed when you're hungry. Eat. Do make good choices, and then we get into that nice little intuitive place where I'm I'm trying to get with all my clients where you're 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 very satisfied where you're at. You're able to keep a, a, a lean a lean physique uh, at the same time, and then you don't feel like you're also stuffing yourself all the time. Right. Yeah. Because I was starting to go down the path of like eating snacks or sugar in order to get to that calorie place, and I just that's not the path I wanted to start down. So. Um, in order to just real quick, in order to minimize the muscle loss, do you recommend changing like a program to like a prime or uh, more mobilization instead of lifting in order to minimize that muscle loss? I mean, actually the opposite. Yeah. yeah. The op oh, okay. Anabolic would be right. yeah. like an anabolic strength based type of program. Yeah. And, and obviously keeping your protein intake high. The, uh, studies are pretty good on this. Like your, as your calories drop, your protein in intake to minimize muscle loss typically needs to go up. So if you're around 0.7 grams per pound of body weight. Uh, you can move up to one gram per pound of body weight while cutting, you know, maybe fat and carbs to bring your calories down. Just keep this in mind. If you, if we, if we reduce calories and we also change the signal of trying to get your body to build muscle to doing things more like mobility, it'll adapt in that direction, which it'll pare down muscle. So if we want to hang on to as much muscle as we want, you want to still send the signal that we were trying to build, even though you may not be feeding yourself that way. And that should help actually preserve more muscle while also obviously mm -hmm. keeping the protein intake up. Interesting. Okay. That's kind of counterintuitive to what I thought. So I appreciate uh, you <laughs> correcting that. No problem. Thanks for calling, Jacqueline. Yeah. Thank you. You know, it, that's, I'm so glad. Very technical could, question. You need to break all this I, down. I feel like. Yeah. So, so again, she's talking about percentage versus total with lean body mass. She wasn't even bringing up body mass. I know, mass. but let's let's simplify basically what she's asking because to me, even listening, okay, and I know exactly what she's talking about, that there's, there's a lot flying over a lot of people's head right now going like, oh, what did we just hear? You right. can, so percentage is just a percentage of your overall body weight. So that means if you are, you know, if you have 90 pounds of lean body mass and you weigh 100 pounds, it's really easy, right? 10% body fat, 90% lean body mass. If you lost 10 pounds on the scale, Nine of it was body fat. One was muscle. Your percentage of muscle lean body mass goes up a little bit, even though you lost a pound of muscle. But that's not that important. What you want with lean body mass is the total number. Now, the point that was, impo that was important to pay attention to was she said, to maintain this lean body mass, I, I, didn't, I felt daunting yeah. to eat this much food. And yeah, man, listen, building muscle is great, but not at all costs. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you could go on a bunch of anabolic steroids and you can live in a way that's a super unhealthy no, maximize what? your muscle but you're not as healthy you don't feel as good and as expensive as shit one of the most one of the, the the biggest pains in the ass of competing was man when i had got up to that place where i was 230 and yeah. my metabolism was roaring you're i'm eating, eating hundreds of dollars oh, bro, of food a week i mean yeah 5000 calories, 5, calories dude yeah. and like and if you want good choices like you're you're not just piling in garbage in there like that is expensive well that's the real part of the question i think she was trying to get to was the fact that she was starting to in include like simple sugars and things into her diet that you know normally she wouldn't even have been trying to seek out but uh, you know the calorie amount was just too much next question is mitchell from ohio hey mitchell how can we help you yeah so the reason why i reached out to you guys is i'm um, having some muscle imbalances and the reason why is i was a football player at a d1 school i was a punter and so through that repetitive actions I led to some hypertrophies on my right side, you know, compared to my left, just through the, all those repetitive actions. And I know a lot about it just because I actually did, as I graduated college, I then went into the personal training and chiropractic field. So I'm now a 
chiropractor and <clears throat> I use a lot of what I've learned from you guys and what I've learned through school to better my knowledge. So I was just the reason why I was emailing you guys was just see what you guys had to say about that. Okay. I so did recently email or uh, purchase anabolic and I love that. I've actually seen really, really good, you know, well, tremendous results just because I haven't used that kind of programming since college. And the reason why is I don't really want to, you know, strengthen my imbalances even more with that program. Yeah, no. Well, good. yeah, I'd I'd move you to performance. That's the wrong program. Yeah, performance would be more ideal. Yeah, maps and anabolics can be wrong for you because it's so barbell focused. And if you have a well, big careful, a wrong sounds hella bad. Well, yeah. well, it's what a, I mean is it's not the ideal program, right? Well, I mean, <laughs> if you have big, so I look, I've trained athletes because everybody's got a difference between the right and left. Okay, yeah. that's that's super common. But I've trained athletes where the difference was so stark. It was actually quite remarkable. I've trained pitchers where I've seen this. I've trained, yeah. you know, baseball players. I've trained soccer players where I've seen even some of this. Mm -hmm. uh, in your case, I could see why one side would especially be so a, much. Everybody favors one side. Yeah. So, but this is this could be pretty big if you're an athlete and you train like that. Like it could be pretty big. So, yeah. what I would do is I would do all unilateral work, That's right. yep. and I would make the weaker side dictate the weight and the reps. That's it. So that means you're going to go easier on your strong mm -hmm. side for a while until the weaker side catches Split up. Split stances are going to be your friend too. Yeah, so. because if you push the barbell, you know, two sides at the same time exercises and push the weight, you're not going to catch up. You're going to you're going to continue to have this disparity. It may take you, depending on how long you played that sport, might take you a year of just unilateral work, uh, focusing on the weak side first before you start to balance yourself out. Even more specific for a client, I would look single leg deadlifts for you. All day, man. We're spending a lot of time doing that for sure to try and balance. And just like Sal said, I'm, we're doing the, the opposite side first. So, And this is a, another person that, okay, so unilateral work like crazy, a lot of stability stuff, uh, multi-planar movements, which is in performance. So performance yeah, phase is two is, yeah. is going to be like the most impactful for you, I think. I would even almost jump you right into phase two uh, to address a lot of these imbalances and, and see you know, how you respond and, and uh, how, how, how your body is, is able to stabilize even properly. Yeah, well, you could also add this. So if you don't have uh, Prime Pro, I would get I would get that, and then what I would do is I would do all the all the tests in there, so on the major joints, and compare the left to the right, and the the side that is is uh, less mobile, I'd sp I would make effort to spend time before workouts and throughout the day of addressing the immobility of that one, because so more than likely there's going to be a, a major discrepancy from left to right for you. And so that's what I'm looking for is I'm going to go down all those. I'm going to go down all the major joints and I'm going to probably pick two or three of the greatest offenders. So the ones where there's the greatest discrepancy between left and right mobility. And that is now going to become something that I try and do at least two, three times a day, certainly before I lift and then focusing primarily on unilateral training. Uh, those things should do uh, do wonders for you if, you if you focus your training around that. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, guys. No problem, Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Thanks for calling. I remember the first time this happened to me. I had a client. This was a kid who was a remarkable high school pitcher. I mean, this kid threw some serious heat, but he'd been pitching since he was a kid. And his dad said, hey, he's a little imbalanced between his right and left. I had him do – he walks in, and I could see it, like just him walking. Mm -hmm. I did an assessment, and I was like, wow, this is – huge imbalance. Now he was still playing baseball, so I couldn't attack it super aggressively because I don't want to mess up his technique. Yeah. He eventually stopped playing and that's all we did. Was And it took a year to see oh. some actual balance. This is the danger too of specializing too early uh, with kids. Yes. Like, they really don't... Well, their bones actually... Especially with something way. like a pitcher, right? So you only have so many throws. And, and so to uh, make sure that you get a lot of variety and a lot of different exposure to different movements is even more essential for kids but like to, to his point uh, really to be able to isolate both sides and, and work your way through that is going to be massively uh, beneficial i would say punting's right up there i mean punting's going to be really close to pitching yeah. the same basically same similar, similar this the lower body version yeah, that's right yeah i mean and you're planting so hard on one side yep. always on that side so he's going to be really strong on that plant foot he's going to have crazy mobility right. in the in the because at least soccer you're switching it up yeah exactly yep. soccer you're getting a little bit of a balance back and forth but pitching and and a punter like I'm trying to think of what else is like that. That's that that they're dude. You, you know they've done bowlers. Yeah, because remember <laughs> your your body is trying to get better at what you do, and this can be this can get extreme. You know that they've actually dug up bones 
in England and other parts of Europe, and they can tell by looking at the spine the long bones. and the humerus mm -hmm. bones that they were long bowmen. A long bow is this huge long bow required like 180 pounds of pulling power. It was like made you a dominant force during medieval times. And they would look at the spines, and they they were molded and twisted. You see a big scapula and a big like humerus on one side into this twisted position. Yeah, and it's because their bodies became good at this one sided type of throw, so, which is okay for sports. But when you're done playing sports, now you're you know now you now you're moving weird. So look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com. We got tons of free stuff that we give all of our listeners. Lots of stuff. Go check it out. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Our vulnerability is when we don't wake up every day and ask ourselves, why are people working out and what do we need to do to keep them consistent? Mm -hmm. At some point, it may become more about education. It may become about, you know, giving them different types of routines. It might be about understanding that when people do begin to fall off the wagon, because maybe they had a life event, maybe they had a kid, how 